Trevair. And use the electric GT setup. <laughs> okay. That's pretty cool. I like this. This is the remember uh Abraham had this. Did you send them a picture? Send them a picture. Yeah, I took a picture but I, I didn't send a picture. Tell them this is what you need to do. Or this is what you should have done before you gave it away. This is what, yes. You should have done this to your Corvair. This is nice. So clean. Okay, so here's one of the color that we pre-order. Oh, check it out. I never seen the little camera there. There we go. No camp kitchen. The radio is, oh, look, you get to hear the radio. That sounds, doesn't sound that great, by the way. Is this an Alta? Oh, no, this is a, is this, is this a custom one? Oh, no way. It's got a AM controller. That's pretty cool. Matt, What's how's up? it going? I'm Jay Who. Nice, nice meeting you. you. We met at SEMA. Yeah. And you didn't take your car. I didn't. It wasn't done, wasn't done yet. It wasn't just done. Actually, I just got the hood on last night. I just got the fenders on a couple of days ago. So. Um, I've driven it once before this, but I didn't have the fenders, bumpers, or the hood on it. And it kind of looked a little. Uh, oh, you were driving it when you were driving it. It was, it was like without the hood and stuff. Right. Yeah. No wonder why people were giving you the looks. Yeah. <laughs> All your neighbors were like, I, "What is it?" I drove here today, and I uh, people are still giving me looks. It's a unique, <laughs> weird looking car. And I noticed that you left the the grill is not there, so you can still see that there's no engine yeah, in there. I was thinking about leaving the hood off, so you could see there's no engine. But it looks so much better with the hood on. The but hood. I love that. Yeah, you can just see that it's kind of empty in there. So I think I'm gonna leave it like this. I like the like the look. Yeah. So I've been following your build for a little while. Uh, it's been pretty interesting. You have a really good way of explaining your thought process when it comes to oh, you thanks. know figuring things out. Um, yeah, well, I think, I mean, I'm figuring out a lot of this stuff, too. A lot of fabrication stuff I kind of know, but the electric stuff is a little bit new to me. I've worked for electric car companies for most of the last 10 years, but I've always been on the vehicle side. Ah. Um, so a lot of this is still new to me, too. So it's like, you know, I learn it, and I want other people to be able to, to dive into it also. So I try to yeah. gather the information up into um, a way that people can, can follow along and yeah hopefully make it a little bit easier for somebody dude else. you're great like you're i i posted a comment way back in the day you're doing the lowest work when it comes to <laughs> this stuff because i started looking at your videos because i'm my bus over there that's a terrible car like the suspension is just terrible oh, yeah, yeah. so I, you have to redo it right yeah. or put up with it and i thought i'm just gonna redo it so i started watching some of your early videos because you were you basically have to redo the suspension of this guy too, right? Yeah. So I kind of just took the, it's all junk. So hot rodding is weird. Like, you know, everybody uses the Ford nine inch, but nobody uses a nine inch rear end from an actual Ford. They use the aftermarket. The aftermarket. Um, or that like that, it's weird like drag racing guys still use the Anglia spindles from a Ford that hasn't been made for 70 years. It's just that this aftermarket grew up. And so now everybody's using all these aftermarket parts that happen to have the same geometry. Same thing with a Ford Mustang too. So the whole front end is all this aftermarket stuff from a Mustang too. Suspension geometry is pretty hard. You change one thing, it changes a dozen other things. So it was nice to be able to, you know, be a little creative with some of the parts, but just sort of maintain an existing geometry that I know works well. So that's yeah. kind of what I did. Yeah, but you explain, because I, I don't know anything about suspension. I had to start learning and I'm like, oh, let me look at in the internet see what people are doing and your videos popped up because you're explaining some of these things that are i mean maybe for you are now known things but for some of us are like i don't know how to figure out some geometry like we didn't even know any of this stuff yeah. right and so you you have a really way cool way of explaining that stuff and especially on a car that now you are driving it how is it driving i mean other than the electric stuff we talk about that but like 
the suspension wise i mean it feels pretty good it's so noisy because i'm uh, the seals are all like totally chewed up yeah um i have a hole through the trunk into the into the trunk and then from the trunk into the ground so it's like so noisy that you can't you can't tell uh <laughs> it's just distracting but as far as road feel yeah uh yeah every time i go over a bump i hear a bunch of creaks and weird noises but it feels yeah. all right so i think it's pretty good the suspension is I got air suspension up front, so I'm still trying to like tune uh, how high and what uh, pressure to put in it. Air suspension is kind of funny because to get more height, you add more air and air. you have more pressure, so it's stiffer and Stiffens higher. it up. It the other way around. You want it stiffer when it's lower, but it doesn't really work that way. Yeah, that's why I that. don't want to do air suspension at mine. I've been looking at this system that does, it's, it's a hybrid hydraulic, uh, it's a hydraulic, but it's, it's only on the same shock like you know it's not like yeah. you don't need like an extra pump it's like electric i think they have their own little pump on each actual actuator or whatever the yeah, ram okay. uh, it's, uh, it's really expensive yeah. but it allows you to actually raise and lower the car without changing the stiffness of the suspension yeah, yeah. so you can do that if you have two airbags um sort of fighting each other uh, they kind of, oh. Mountain bike shocks kind of do this internally, and I'm surprised it's not a bigger thing on cars. In cars, the uh, and it's actually a little disappointing that you know you can get it on any mountain bike, but, but not in a car size. I, I don't know if you can buy it. I, it's certainly not a thing that's relatively inexpensive and freely available, widely available. We'll have to make it. Maybe <laughs> we'll have to make because who, who wants to change their their ride? You know, suspension feel, right? Like yeah. you just want to change the actual. Uh, and I've been thinking about doing electric you know how there's those electric rams yeah. or, so they're not hydraulic they have like little motor yeah, yeah. gear like yeah. a gear ram or whatever. yeah model x doors use those okay yeah. so i'm like there's some that are really strong that you could actually lift the car or put four of them and then you could you know i'm like how come people are not using this yet like and then you put the shock after that so then you adjust yeah, your yeah. thing yeah that's what you're saying um maybe yeah, with a cantilever like a, if you could have like a bell crank where you have your suspend your shock on one side and then you have a electric motor that moves the uh the pivot of the bell crank or something yeah yeah i'm like how come I'm doing? apparently they do a lot of this stuff like in racing like i've been looking at the cantilever suspensions and because with cars like i don't know you run into the problems where you don't have enough room to put like bigger shocks or you know this other stuff and so I know the race cars, they do it by just reposition the shocks and, yeah. and the direction and stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, hey, maybe that's what we need to start doing. Yeah. Yeah. If I do something weird, like I was saying, like the two airbags uh, working against each other, I have plenty of room in, under here. I could just put a bell crank in and that's right. control all sorts of stuff. So you don't have a motor in the way. Project. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll figure out something else with that. <laughs> that's right. So how about the electric stuff? What, is, what system did you end up using to uh, control the Tesla motor? Nginext. Engine. So okay. yeah, it's uh, basically the only game in town still, weirdly. Like I've been working on this for almost a year. And I've kind of expected uh, AEM or EV controls or um, Engineerics or one of these guys to come up with a production controller. And uh, it's still just Nginx. They're, they're great guys. Um, they're very helpful. I couldn't get this thing to charge yesterday. And I emailed them. I'm like, hey, I need help right now. And they immediately remoted into my computer and helped me figure it out. So um, Wait, because you have a complete... Model 3? Model 3 drivetrain, yeah. Battery, the whole penthouse from the battery, which is like the battery management system, the DC-DC. Uh, DC, the uh, contactors and the charger. Contactors, yeah, charger. Uh, oh, so you're... This is a legit Model 3. Honestly, if I had to... <laughs> there's like a, a handful of other parts if I had, it would be the entire powertrain. If I had the cooling, the thermal management cube, if I had the front control module, maybe a few other modules. Um, it might have actually been easier and then I wouldn't need the controller. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's essentially entirely... Uh, Will this super supercharge? No. Uh, so <laughs> I have a whole video on that. Oh, okay. So um, technically, uh, it's probably... So I got it from a salvage car. So the VIN number is probably in Tesla's... Well, let's see how they... I don't know about that. So you have to, I'd have to have another part of the car that communicates with the supercharger that says i'm okay to supercharge okay and i don't have that okay i have to have a thermal an active thermal management system that uses an ac compressor because supercharging is one of the highest thermal loads on the car yes uh, so i don't have that if i had those two i could probably use it but tesla doesn't allow supercharging on swaps or salvage vehicles so as soon as i pulled up to a supercharger and plugged it in somebody take a picture that picture go on instagram yeah tesla would see it they'd send me a cease and desist yes to tell me that. but you're saying technically 
could pause, it could happen. Yeah, if I added a few components. Yeah, okay. I, I, actually, if I add active cooling, if I put an uh, active cooling means like I use an air co conditioning compressor to cool the coolant. Yeah. Um, I could probably use EVgo or one of the other high power charging systems. Yeah, 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 yeah. okay. But I'm not gonna go on any- CCS projects, combo. You know? So it's like, I don't know if I'll ever need that anyway. Yeah, you're, I mean, it depends, right? Like. You're right, for around town you don't need it. But like if you ever got this thing where it was dial in and you're like, this is what I want to drive, you know, and go on a trip or whatever, you you might want to do that. But I mean that's in the future. That's the holy grail like thing of the even conversions is to fast charge. Yeah. I'll give you an example. I came in my bus, yeah, but it took fifty percent of my battery to get here and now I means I have fifty percent to get back home. I'm like I'm kind of short. I, that's why I have those batteries in there and I'm yeah. charging it. Yeah. I wouldn't have to do that if I could just pull up to the nearest fa DC fast charger yeah. and just, you know, for 10 minutes and yeah. then on my way home, right? So. Yeah, so that might be a thing I had in the future. I'm definitely going to add air conditioning because it's black and hot yeah. and it's really hot. So if I do that, all I really have to do is put a chiller in there and a valve to run that through the, the battery and keep it cool. So yeah, might be in the future. Here's a, a, a crazy story. I talked to Otmar Evanhart. He is one of these guys that was part of Tesla way back in the day. I know Otmar. Oh, Otmar, okay. So he was going to convert a, a car, a whole swap. And I told him, I go, how are you going to supercharge? And he goes, I I know... Uh, JB. JB. Strobel. Strobel, yeah, yeah, yeah. JB Strobel. He goes, I called him and I said, hey, can I supercharge? And he goes, yeah, if anybody gives you a problem, just email me and I'll take care of it. He, he doesn't goes, work there anymore, so. <laughs> so, so I think that probably is out the door now. <laughs> But that was very interesting because that's the same thing, right? It's like if you show up with a bunch of weird car. Although Tesla's opening up their supercharger, so eventually. Yeah, so they're doing that. I think, I haven't dug into this too deeply, but I think that they have some tax advantage or some advantage in Norway or in Europe for doing that. And I think that's why they're doing that's it. And I don't think they have that advantage yet in the US. Here. So I think they're probably doing it to make a little more money. And oh, probably I see. it's not going to be a thing that. I don't know that it's a good thing for them because there's already, if you're a holiday weekend and you go to a Tesla supercharger it's, on I-5, it's a line around the block. Yes. It's gonna get way worse if there's a bunch of Porsche tickets. Well, but there. wouldn't they have to now start charging those? Uh, the only way they're gonna open it up is if the other uh, manufacturers start pitching in to develop the, the infrastructure. That's what it has to be. Have to be like, and that's okay, why it hasn't happened. You can use it, but you have to put up 20,000 chargers in the next six months. Or yeah, something like that. So eventually great. it's going to happen, I think. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. If the people are willing to pay to play, right? Yeah. I guess. I mean, on the side of consumer, I guess we could always try to hack a thing and, and plug in or whatever. Yeah, but the fun thing about this is like, you you know, Tesla can make it harder and someone will find a way out and around it and they'll make it harder. It's again. a challenge for yeah. the rest of us. Oh, yeah. We'll, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> Well, this is a cool, cool build, man. Uh, you just are finishing it. I mean, this is still a work in progress, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, Absolutely. I mean, I have my uh, Honda S600 I've had for 10 years, and that's still a project. It's still a work in progress. I just love working on Mine stuff. is 10 years old. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, it's, it's still, you know, I'm still tweaking it every day. Yeah. That's yeah. Because that's the fun part of it, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, I, don't, I mean, I, I love having the car and driving the car, but I also love building it, maybe a little bit more, so. Yeah. So once you finish this one, do you see building another one? Uh, so I have another project lined up. You, you have another one already. Quite talk about it yet? Oh, but, okay. Uh, and then I have. Why finish one when you can start another one? That's <laughs> my saying right there. Um, what else? There was. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to do another classic EV swap just yet. Okay. Um, I do have kind of. A, I actually have a couple of projects. One of them is an EV. Uh, yeah, I don't really want to talk about it too much right now, but I have a couple ideas, and uh, they're going to be crazy. So. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I, we've been enjoying uh, watching your progress here. Uh, it's nice to see it out here in the show. You're the only one that has uh, this kind of car out here, right? Is there another? Do you know of any other conversion of Jaguar? Whole Jaguar? Like Old Jaguars? So there's a couple of companies that are doing conversions of old British cars in England, and uh, I don't know if they've any, done any old Jags. I know that there's been some... Uh, E-types, uh, Jaguar E-types that have been converted, but I don't, certainly nobody's done it. Nobody really cares about the Mark V. The only other car that Jag made this year was the XK120, which was like the fastest car in the world when it came out. Oh. So this was like way overshadowed by this amazing other Jaguar. Ah, so this, this, this car has sort a... of spent its whole life a little obscure. Ah, this uh, is the middle child. It is, yeah. Yeah, it's like the middle. <laughs> yeah. What? Uh, well, what year is it? 
50. It's a 50. This is early, yeah. Yeah. But there are, so this is sort of based on a Bentley Mark VI. And uh, I'd be surprised if there are people doing Bentley Mark VI EV conversion soon, you know, because that stuff is so old, so expensive, so hard to find yeah. replacement parts for it. At some point, it's, you might as well just shove a new motor in there. And if you're going to shove a motor in there, might as well be electric. Yes. So your other project is kind of ratty, right? The, oh, the Honda? The Honda, yeah, right? Yeah. Are you planning to finish this one or just drive it like that? So I'm kind of on the fence. Uh, somebody repainted this at some point and they did a piss poor job. So it's originally this gray color and the black's peeling off. So I'm definitely going to clean up those spots and clean up some of the surface rust and probably polish up the chrome. But I don't... I'm sort of on the fence. I might pay somebody. I hate bodywork and painting, so if I do it, somebody else is doing it, and we give yes. them money. But I might have it re all repainted black. But the problem is, if I do that, I have to re-chrome everything because then this chrome is going to stick out. If yeah. I do that, I have to go back in and fix all. You know, yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's a never-ending story. Like it's yeah. And by that time, I'm fifteen thousand dollars into making the car look pretty, and I don't actually care if it looks much pretty. I want to, like I said, fix up the <laughs> yes. watch you paint, but. Uh, well, I don't know if this is already a thing, but like the number one question in my uh, YouTube channel is, when are you going to paint it? Really? Yeah. When are you going to paint it? When are you going to paint it? When are you going to paint it? Yeah, my bus. Bus looks awesome. The way it so, is. so this is not the original bus. This is actually I have I have four of them. This is the second one. Yeah. That I have converted. The other one I finally parked it so that I can paint it, but I refuse to you know drive a modern car or whatever. So I'm like I got this one in the interim. Yeah. But the number one question is like, when are you going to paint it? When are you going to paint it? When are you going to paint it? I don't know. I think part of it is that I grew up in a time when there was just this over uh, a glut, I guess, of, uh, of old hot rods where people took these old cars and they put like a $30,000 paint job. With yeah. On gaudy, like chrome everything. And it, just, <laughs> it felt like so overdone to me that something that has a little bit of a personality from its age feels uh, more genuine Fresh. and just more interesting. So... I do think this car would look super cool with a super nice paint job that's shined up chrome. Yeah. But like I said, the money and the fact that I feel like it has a lot of personality right now kind of makes me not want to do that. Ah, I see. Well, I don't know. However you decide to go, I think it's going to be great. Um, although painting it black would be probably more than $30,000. <laughs> yeah, you think so? Yes, because it's the hardest color to get. Yeah. Yeah, because every little thing shows, so it's like, yeah, you have to paint it like two, three times. You know, like if you want to get it like, like... Nice, nice. Yes, yeah. nice, you know. So yeah, I, that's the same thing that I'm looking at. So my idea was to build a bunch of them and rent them because like that's the only way that I can justify owning a bunch of cars, right? Yeah. So I'm like, oh, okay, I got to have some that are pretty because people like pretty. Yeah, that's true. I think there's a thing that people are starting to appreciate the old patina stuff, but not everyone, right? There's, there's... Yeah, I mean, I take my Honda out, and people love it. People love the way it looks, and, uh, you know, people will walk past $6 million worth of McLarens and Ferraris to look at my rusty old Honda. Yeah. Because it's different, it's unique, and it has personality, so, like, I, uh, I like that. I don't know if everybody likes it, but... Yeah, but if you like it, it keeps you driving. Yeah. You won't... The thing about the older cars like this is that you don't mind driving it because you don't have to protect that $30,000 paint. That's, yeah, that's another thing is I don't want to like park in the back of the parking lot and take up two spots and be worrying about it the whole time I'm anywhere. You don't want to be that guy. I don't want to be, no, it's like it makes it not fun anymore. Yeah. It's got a couple of dings in it already and it gets another ding. Then, uh, it's another one to the collection. Yeah, I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. It's not going to ruin my week. Yeah. Well, that's cool. Uh, yeah, good job. I, uh, I'm a fan. I've been watching your videos. Thanks. And I'll keep watching your videos until you finish it or start the next one. Yeah. <laughs> All right. It'll never be finished. So. It'll never be finished. <laughs> All right, Matt. Thank you for this. All right, thank you, Jay. Autopia 2099 and I made it here with 50% of my battery so that means I would need 50% of my battery to get back home so I was a little bit 
worried about that. So while I'm at the show, I've been charging using the EcoFlow Pro. And look at this. I mean, I'm charging at 3,200 watts, right? So I've done two of these already. That's seven kilowatt in there. When this one's done, I'm gonna be, uh, 2007 is 21. So I'm gonna put 21 kilowatt hours back into the battery. And I have a couple hours more. So there's another one that I have charging over there. I might be able to do 30 kilowatt hours back in here and put exactly 50% of the battery that I used to get here back into this car. How crazy is that? That's pretty crazy. And it's happening with the EcoFlow. See, an off, um, off the shelf battery that you can do. Uh, obviously we can build your own DIY. I'll show you guys how to do that later uh, in the future. And I've done this in the past too. So if you want some um, inspiration, you can just watch some of my older videos, but definitely this is possible. You could totally do it. Here's our little setup. We have our uh, videos over there playing. There you go. Go. Oh, and they got the. This is the actual one that is from them. The adventure. What what's the package that this comes with? Oh, uh, that's just an add-on accessory. Oh, it's an add-on. Yeah. So it's not. Oh, I thought it was like a whole thing that you no, have to so get. This, so this was launch edition. Launch edition, yeah. And then it's got the off-road package on it, which is the twenties and the specific underbody protection and the tow. Oh, the off girl. Oh, I see. I see. I we have a launch edition mm -hmm. order, uh, but I don't think I got that package. Um, they changed the, the blend around a little bit. I think the offer package is like a two thousand dollar ad now. Oh, okay. Yeah. But launch is still. I think it's one of the color combos is included, and you can get green if you picked it. So I, I, I didn't. I actually got white. Yeah, got white. Yeah, yeah. So we, had, we had picked green initially, but we had a chance to pick this one up early from the factory. Ah. Uh -huh. uh -huh. so are you guys employees or are you guys oh, just regular? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Because that's. Managers. Oh, okay, yeah, because that's that's the word on the street is that okay, it's just employees first, and then yeah. It's supposed to be starting non-employee deliveries. March, April, yeah, right? Totally that's March. what we got. Next month. Oh, next month. Oh, because the other thing was that people would said that all the January had moved on to so those are March. Nice deliveries. The SUVs. That one, they're we're probably going to do the first couple this month, but the volume of that's going to be. Ah, oh, we actually have two. We have an SUV and a. T1 and, on, the so. and the Amazon and everything else that's already in prototype. And it's a good thing that uh, the, the Ford thing didn't work out because you guys would have been <laughs> constrained. Well, that was, that was pre COVID. That was, the announcement for that was. Yeah. People are making it seem like it's bad news, but I think it's, it's more not, good news than bad, bad news. news I think it's not anything that's possibly negative helps to the but it's looking at stock prices. Like yeah, I see. Well. And uh, Brad deserves a round of applause for getting this whole thing. <laughs> Right now, we have this space for a little while if you want to hang out and have some more coffee and all that stuff. But, but uh, thank you all for coming, and we really appreciate it. And I'm just going to be this the uh, person who goes out here. But um, we, as auto journalists, a lot are told, oh, enthusiasm is going to go away when EVs come out. They're not fun to try. They're not interesting. They're not, you know. Why bother? And I think every one of you folks here today is a testament that that's not the case. So thank you all for coming. Good to know about all of you. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, we're here till four, so hang out, talk to everybody, have a good time. Bye, everyone. Love, you move fast for me. Can catch up with the thoughts in your mind. 
they're everywhere And it's hard for me to bear Cause I get so lost Feel just like a boomerang Cause you change your plans every day And you don't seem to care what I think Or how it affects me Since I lay my eyes on you I just want to make your dreams come true My lady If you low I lift you up Just let me know When she gets tough Do you feel the way I do My baby Do you see me like I see you My lady I love you But I don't need you I only want true love Sentence